Astronauts aboard China's Tiangong Space Station have just achieved something that could redefine humanity's future in space. Using a drawer-sized device, the Shenzhou-19 crew transformed carbon dioxide and water into both oxygen and the building blocks of rocket fuel, right there in orbit. This breakthrough in artificial photosynthesis isn't just another experiment. It's a vision of how we might one day sustain lunar bases and deep space missions. The Shenzhou-19 mission, launched to the Tiangong Space Station, carried out a groundbreaking series of experiments. Among them was a test that, for the first time in human history, demonstrated artificial photosynthesis working in orbit. The astronauts had access to a drawer-sized device, deceptively small, but engineered with advanced semiconductor catalysts capable of replicating the way plants capture and convert energy. Instead of relying on sunlight, the system harnessed controlled light sources and catalysts to drive chemical reactions in microgravity. Here's what actually happened inside that drawer. Carbon dioxide exhaled by the astronauts, combined with water, was broken down and rearranged at the molecular level. The result wasn't just oxygen to breathe. The process also produced hydrocarbons, including ethylene, a compound widely used on Earth as both an industrial feedstock and a foundation for rocket propellants. For context, ethylene is a critical chemical in the manufacturing of plastics, antifreeze, and fuels, so being able to generate it in space is a significant step forward. The system achieved this at room temperature and normal pressure. That detail is important. Traditional space life support systems, like those on the International Space Station, rely on electrolysis, which splits water into hydrogen and oxygen using large amounts of electricity from solar panels. A 2023 University of Bremen study found this process consumes nearly one-third of the ISS's total energy supply. By contrast, the Tiangong experiment bypassed these heavy energy costs, demonstrating that efficient chemistry can be done in orbit without massive infrastructure. The experiments didn't stop at simple conversion. The crew also tested how gases and liquids moved through the system in microgravity ensuring that chemical separation and product detection could be accurately measured. They verified the presence of oxygen and hydrocarbons through real-time analysis, giving researchers confidence that the device works consistently. What makes this achievement remarkable is how compact and efficient the system is. Rather than relying on frequent cargo deliveries from Earth, astronauts now have proof that vital resources, oxygen for survival and hydrocarbons for propulsion, can be created directly in orbit. To understand why this breakthrough matters, let's first compare it to the systems humanity already uses. On the ISS, astronauts breathe thanks to the oxygen generation assembly, which relies on water electrolysis. It works, but it's power-hungry and only produces oxygen. Fuel, water, and other consumables must still be delivered from Earth by cargo spacecraft. By contrast, Tiangong's artificial photosynthesis device demonstrated that you can generate two critical resources at once, oxygen for life support and hydrocarbons for propulsion. Ethylene is the first confirmed hydrocarbon product, but researchers note that by adjusting the catalyst properties, the same system could produce methane. What sets this apart is its efficiency and adaptability. Unlike electrolysis, which requires specialized equipment and a heavy electrical load, Artificial photosynthesis runs at ambient pressure and temperature, using semiconductor materials to drive the reaction. This dramatically cuts down the energy requirements. In the tight energy budgets of spacecraft and space stations, where every what matters, such savings could translate into longer mission durations or the ability to power other critical systems. There's also the sustainability factor. Space exploration has long been hampered by our reliance on Earth as the ultimate supply depot. Every kilogram of oxygen or propellant sent into orbit has to be launched against Earth's gravity, and launch costs remain one of the greatest barriers to exploration. By converting waste CO2, a natural byproduct of astronaut respiration, into useful products, this system recycles what was once a liability. This development also opens doors to closed-loop ecosystems. Imagine a future spacecraft or lunar base where carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight feed directly into a system that generates both breathable oxygen and fuel. 
Waste becomes input, and output sustains the crew and their vehicles. That's not just efficiency, it's resilience. It makes missions less dependent on constant resupply and more capable of surviving unexpected delays or emergencies. In essence, what we're seeing is the early foundation of space resource independence. For the first time, astronauts have created in orbit what they once relied on Earth to deliver. The practical applications of this technology are enormous, especially as China pushes toward its ambitious space milestones. The country has openly stated its goal of landing astronauts on the moon before 2030 and developing a permanent lunar research station in the following decade. For such plans, the question isn't just how to get astronauts there. It's how to keep them alive, productive, and independent once they arrive. Artificial photosynthesis could be the missing puzzle piece. The moon's south pole, where water ice has been detected in permanently shadowed craters, is a prime target for future bases. If astronauts can extract that water and combine it with carbon dioxide brought from Earth or generated locally, they could use a Tiangong-like system to produce oxygen for breathing and hydrocarbons for fuel. This would reduce the need for massive supply runs from Earth, turning the Moon itself into a partially self-sustaining outpost. The same concept applies to Mars, perhaps even more strongly. Mars has a CO2-rich atmosphere and evidence of subsurface water ice. That means the raw ingredients for artificial photosynthesis are already abundant. Imagine a Mars mission where the crew lands with a reactor the size of a suitcase, capable of turning local resources into oxygen and methane. This would not only sustain the crew but also create propellant for the return journey, removing the need to launch massive amounts of fuel from Earth in advance. This technology could support deep space missions lasting months or years. Future crew journeys to asteroids or long-duration space habitats will demand robust, efficient life support systems. Artificial photosynthesis offers exactly that, the ability to recycle waste into survival essentials. It complements other technologies like hydroponics or algae farms, forming part of a closed system where oxygen, food, and fuel are continuously regenerated. The Shinjo-19 experiments are therefore not just a scientific curiosity. They are a direct rehearsal for the future of human presence beyond Earth. China's demonstration shows that sustaining life and powering missions might not require endless supply chains from Earth. What happened aboard Tiangong is more than just a clever experiment. It's a turning point. By demonstrating that oxygen and hydrocarbons can be generated in orbit through artificial photosynthesis, China has provided a glimpse into sustainable space living. From moon bases to Mars journeys, this technology could make the difference between short visits and permanent presence. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.